Yo, what is going on Comfy Gang? It's your boy Comfy Neat. So to, for today's video, I'm gonna be going back to my usual um, Denpa. I think that's like, you know, Daniel Lord. Um, and you know, the whole like ranting, negative ranting type videos, I guess. I'm gonna be going back to that for my usual content, but I will be uploading some like neat ascension stuff in the near future and trying out some different stuff. Um, so anyways, stay tuned for that. But today I wanted to talk about something that I guess might only be specific to me, but I feel like a lot of needs might relate to this because it basically addresses a lot of the alienation uh, that I feel from the world around me, uh, from society, from people, and why I never feel like I fit in. And that's because, well, yeah, I'll be talking about why I feel like I don't fit in, why I feel like I don't belong, and basically by extension, why I don't have a core um, identity, I guess. And well, I do have a core identity, or but it's kind of like fragmented and how that makes me a neat. So um, I guess this is impossible without telling a little bit about myself because I feel like I haven't really talked about that, my background, where I came from. So I actually grew up, uh, this is such doxable information, but um, yeah, so please don't dox me unless you're gonna send me some Amazon uh, gifts for my wish list, which I'm gonna make soon. I'm just kidding, but um, anyways, so the story of me starts in the little island of Taiwan. Some consider it a part of China, um, I personally don't because I grew up there and I've never experienced any, you know, direct political influence from China. So obviously I have pretty strong feelings about that, but then that might just be me being brainwashed by whatever propaganda, whatever the powers that be, who knows, but that's besides the point. I grew up in Taiwan, which is a predominantly East Asian, predominantly Mandarin speaking country and guess what? I don't speak any Mandarin and <laughs> that should be telling you something right there. Um, but basically, uh, I am, despite growing up in an East Asian country and despite looking East Asian myself, I am actually uh, biracial, like the rapper Logic, who always says that he's biracial. <laughs> but um, I am not just biracial, but triracial. Um, I'm actually half half ethnic Chinese, um, three eighths Filipino, and um, one eighth Spanish, European Spanish. And um, basically because of that already, you know, I always look different from the lo a lot of the people that I grew up around, although maybe less so than maybe some other places in East Asia, because there are there is an Aboriginal population in Taiwan whom I share some of the features with so I do pass for Taiwanese sometimes But a lot of times people will ask me if I was mixed or not. So I've always had that going for me already where I've always been sort of exotic and I have noticed that people I'm not gonna say have treated me badly for it, but they definitely already treated me with that sort of outsider mentality, which is very common in East Asia um, not not even as much in Taiwan as in places like Korea or Japan or even um, China where, you know, ethnic purity is really uh, a huge part. It's a it's a huge I'm not going to I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It is a pretty huge aspect of these societies where they will they're not going to treat you badly per se, but you will always be sort of an outsider if you don't look alike, first of all. And um, obviously that that can easily change if maybe, maybe I could pass for a Taiwanese person if I spoke Mandarin fluently and I understood all of the culture, the cultural, um, I guess, the different cultural idiosyncrasies of Taiwanese culture. But sadly, I don't because I was pretty much isolated from that because my parents, even though my dad is ethnically Chinese, um, coming from the same area that a lot of the Chinese that came to Taiwan came from, 
uh, he actually grew up in the Philippines, so I guess in a sense he could also relate, but he grew up in the Philippines and um, essentially moved to Taiwan for work where I was born. And because of that, uh, I grew up in a household uh, that spoke English. They, the first language that they tried to speak to me was English because I guess they did have this awareness at the time that English was probably the most important language to learn. And, you know, obviously China is catching up economically, but by and large, English is probably one of the most important languages to learn. It's the language of business and everything. So my parents taught me to speak that at home. They spoke it to me, uh, but they spoke it to me with a Filipino accent. So, um, you know, my, but I guess people, I guess you guys don't seem to notice that I have it slightly. Maybe some of you do, but maybe it's all in my head, but I grew up speaking English, English with a Filipino accent. So, um, it's like, yeah, so there's that. And I, I grew up. So the moment my parents uh, had to send me to school, they initially tried sending me to a, a local school, a Mandarin speaking school, but it ended poorly as you might expect, because I literally couldn't communicate with any any of the kids according to them. So what I would do is just, I basically spent maybe two or three weeks just spending time all alone by myself, um, not eating any of the food because my parents never fed me any of the local food. They basically fed me, um, this is gonna sound really strange to some of you, but spam eggs and rice every single meal because that's all I would eat, so. I was being fed that basically for like the first, from the moment I could eat solid food, that's all I was eating. Obviously I wasn't the most in shape kid, um, but I, yeah, I couldn't eat the local food. I couldn't communicate with it, with any of the kids. So already you could sort of see the effects of being from these dis disparate cultures, these different unique, whatever, deferring cultures. Um, definitely affected my ability to blend in for with the local culture and maybe that would have changed if they had just forced me to stay there but my parents um obviously meant well they wanted me to maybe it's actually a better thing that may state that they sent me to an american school in fact but that's what they did uh, got me into this american school i managed to pass the uh whatever examination to see if I qualified, if I was whatever, yeah. Uh, if I could speak English well enough and stuff like that. Um, and I got in, so um, I was in this American school and basically being inoculated from the local culture because um, I basically, um, because I basically go from straight from the school to home because my parents were helicopter parents so and this basically happened all the way from kindergarten to 11th grade where basically right after school ended my parents would pick me up and it was kind of just expected of me to do so and i never really questioned it um and i've i asked them several times if i could hang out at school and stuff but they said no you can't because uh i don't have time and you know you need to go home and do your homework and all that stuff. So I just kind of went with it. I never really, really put up any of a resistance to it. So I would just go straight from school to home and never get the chance to be, um, you know, uh, you know, maybe go out, leave school with friends and maybe go around and experience local stuff until much later on. Um, it's really only until I hit 12th grade that I got to I finally sort of stood up for myself and got to hang out after school and spend time with friends. And that's really when I started to identify with the local culture a little bit more than anything. Well, that's not necessarily true because that's why it's really hard for me to explain. It's, it's complicated. Like I was basically only speaking English. I could, I could barely, I could only speak like basic conversational Mandarin where I could basically get by and order food and things like that, call a cab, but I couldn't, you know, make friends with the people who were around me. I could, but at the same time, I could basically only relate to all these like 
expat kids and um, I guess American born Chinese, American born Asians and and like white people and whatever and like Hispanic and black people who all grew up in this very unique sort of like melting pot, I guess, of for lack of a better term, of like basically like international school kids. And that's pretty much the only people that I could really relate to. I couldn't and it's kind of like this own like very like um isolated like ecosystem and like the kids um that i tended to um but the thing is that like the kids that in the school that i that i went to were like really like upper socioeconomic status like they were extremely wealthy and i on the other hand was just um you know middle class at best so i always felt the sense of poverty and that sort of made me very ashamed of myself and it made it hard for me to fit in in a lot of ways too just like that's something i could talk about in another video like why i felt poor even though i wasn't but um probably sound really ungrateful but anyways um yeah so that's one reason and so the thing is like i spent all this time in this uh unique sort of ecosystem and um i i sort of grew up influenced by both cultures in some aspects where it's like i was introduced to all these western ideas but at the same time the sort of underlying um the underlying sort of expectation of obedience to authority um obedient absolute obedience to authority and you know knowing your place and having a work ethic and not having a work ethic, but like, I don't know, just like almost having like too much of a work ethic and placing your importance, all, all of your attention on social status and grades because all the parents were Asian, mostly were Asian and everyone was basically competing against each other in that environment. And I was in the midst of that. So that influenced me. So it's like I I was basically influenced by both these cultures and at the same time I feel like I never got the chance to I don't know just be exposed to one set of I don't know ideas and beliefs and that I shared with all my with all my peers I guess like everyone so it's like I would go to and from school but every time I was I was outside school I would basically feel like an outsider even though I already felt like an outsider in school because of my social my social ineptitude because my social skills were basically a lot less than they are now I'm not even socially adept um right as of as of now but back then my social skills were far worse and I basically felt like a outsider already for all the reasons I mentioned before. And then when I left school, it's like I couldn't make any friends with the people around me. I always felt like this outsider every time I wasn't in school, um, buying food, like people always asked me if I was on vacation, if I was visiting or if I grew up in America. And it's like, yeah, so I never really felt this. And it's like, I was, I'd always see these like Taiwanese, like, shows and stuff on tv and these cartoons and things but i would mostly just stick to you know cartoon network which was what they had on tv there the america the only and i guess disney cartoon network and it's like even some of my friends who are like more on the taiwanese some of the kids were like more on the taiwanese side of things in my school like i couldn't I couldn't really uh, relate to them because um, it's like, yeah, like they, they would have, I don't know, I couldn't relate to them as far as like all the pop culture references and all the things they were into. And it's like, but I think to a large degree, some of it is me as well, because like people would always jump on these, like these bandwagons and these trends. And I would never seem to follow along for whatever reason some part of me would just sort of ignore it because i found it boring and i didn't find it interesting and i would just go off and do my own thing so maybe it really has nothing to do with a culture 
that I grew up in or my race or whatever, my ethnicity. I don't even know what, what half of these words really mean anymore, but um, it's just, I ended up just picking my, picking and choosing the things that I found interesting on the internet. And sometimes I would find people that I relate to and I guess we would get along as far as those things went and then other times it would be other people but then I'd, I'd never feel like I truly belong with anybody and um, um, it's more like I only felt like I could be truly authentic with myself I always felt like I had to hide certain aspects of myself from other people and maybe that's from being bullied and and made fun of for certain things too so that's obviously another contributing factor as to why I never felt like I belonged and but I feel like the reason I'm bringing up culture and race into this because maybe this is just my misperception of things but I feel like a lot of people like to talk about their roots and where they came from and a lot of times they talk about how you know they're like oh like I'm I'm like this or I'm I'm a proud uh I don't know I'm proud Japanese proud Korean proud Jamaican proud American proud this and that and you know i you know i me and my friends grew up doing this and that and it's like or like we all like they all know like the same music they all have similar music and it's like i can never relate to anybody where it's like i sort of just picked and chose my own culture and it's like so for whatever reason i just really like hip-hop and r&b and uh more recently, I've been getting into things like some of the electronic stuff and more like popular stuff and learning to appreciate more genres. But it's like for the longest time, I just kind of just like picked my own stuff that I was interested in, stuff that I was interested in, watched the own, my own like TV shows that I liked and people would talk about things that have no idea what they're talking about. Um, well, this is not exactly true. I did enjoy game of thrones and stuff like that when it was still when the show was still good when it first came out but um breaking bad too i guess but oh yeah and it's like i would only jump on these sort of bandwagons like watch these popular shows maybe two or three years after people watch them already I, that's like i would just ch check them out of curiosity and eventually learn to like them or sometimes i would check things out that people were interested in and I just wouldn't like it or wouldn't get it. And maybe a few years down the line, I'd check it and finally learn to appreciate it. So maybe it's that I'm sort of like a late bloomer and that my brain, I'm just like a few steps behind everyone else. So I just don't tend to fit in with people because of that. But it's like, I don't know. I, don't know. I just have found it really hard to find people that I really get that I like, share the exact same like music taste with or like i don't know stuff like that uh i don't know music is just one of those things that seems to be like a benchmark of you know your cultural similarity i guess so that's why i mentioned that a lot but um yeah that's i guess another reason and another reason why i feel like i don't belong is because um well i did have some bad experiences with racism which i could talk about in another video it wasn't even that bad compared to a lot of other stories or people's experiences but i just i definitely did have my share of it and at the same time i also was uh you know had this really traumatic experience in the philippines where i was mugged and uh, not mugged but like robbed at gunpoint so it's like that made me hate myself for being Filipino because I hated Filipinos because of that experience because it happened when I, when I was like really young. So that caused a lot of confusion in me where I hated myself for being Filipino, but then I also got racist remarks for being Filipino from Taiwanese people, uh, namely the people in my school, but also sometimes like outside of school. So that's I kind of like hid that part of myself and really felt embarrassed whenever I was, um, whenever um, it was mentioned that I was Filipino, I really felt ashamed of it. But at the same time, I also felt a lot of resentment at the fact that 
I had to feel ashamed that I was Filipino. So it's like, I hated myself and then I hated the people who hated me. And this was in the country that I grew up in. And then moving over to North America, like it's like the East Asia, the East Asian culture has made it so that I don't fit in here exactly either. It's like, I can't appreciate all the memes and it's like I almost have to LARP to fit in. And I feel like LARP meaning pretend or like live action role play for like the normies out there. But um, I, yeah, so it's like, and it's made it where that I feel like I don't have any true place, true true country, true area, true group of people where I can fit in in the real world. It's like I could go back to Taiwan or anywhere. Obviously, I wouldn't feel at home in somewhere like Korea to have to make it my home or like Japan or China because they're extremely like very like culturally, I don't know, strong or whatever. And it's like if I go back to Taiwan where I where I relate the most, I still don't relate enough where I feel at home. And it's like the Western culture that has been, that has influenced me has made it so I, I find certain aspects of Western culture far better than what's in Taiwan and in East Asia in general. And at the same time, it's like a lot of the East Asian culture has made it so that I prefer things in East Asia. And it's like, I just wish there could be this sort of fusion society where uh, these multiple cultures are, you know, sort of maybe like a country or even like a city where it's full of people like me, where I could relate to and, uh, you know, get along with and like, like bond over things because, you know, it's just like we all get each other. And it's like, it's like I've never been around people like that. And maybe that's a really normal experience which I'm referring to, I don't know. Maybe this is normal for everybody, but um, anyways, it's like, I don't feel like I can have anywhere where I can truly call home, which is not true of a lot. Like a lot of people grow up and they feel this sort of sense of alienation, but at the same time, it's like, at the end of the day, I feel at home in, in I don't know, Kansas or, um, or uh, I don't know, Russia. <laughs> Who, who who the f knows but um yeah like i don't i don't get that feeling anywhere so it's like i don't have like a home base you know i don't have somewhere that i can just go back to and like be like oh finally i'm back home like so it's like it's a really conflicting feeling it's like i'll go to these places and i'll feel i'll feel alienated and then i'll miss if i leave where i'm canada for taiwan I will feel, I'll feel good for a while and then I'll start to feel alienated and want to come back to Canada for, cause I'll feel, I feel like I feel more at home there, but then when I go back, I'll miss Asia. So it's like, I don't know. And the reason how this pertain, relates to being me neat is that I, um, I basically, I think, I feel like it's these sort of experiences that causes people to turn towards things like the internet have having a difficult time uh finding people to relate to in real life i guess if anything uh there's more there's more uh people out there that you can interact with in the internet infinitely more people uh on a much smaller time frame like you could it's way easier to send a message than have a conversation so you can literally seek out like billions of different communities and find that little niche where you fit in and uh it's very easy to get lost in the internet in the digital world and i feel like that is where a lot of people like me find refuge and obviously not all of us turn into needs but i feel like at least in my case it certainly is an influencing a heavy a heavy contributing factor as to why i'm currently neat and why i have this this constant sense of alienation, which could very well be explained by numerous other mental illnesses because there are a lot of people in my position who end up finding a culture that they identify with. So obviously it's not entirely just the fact that I grew up as a quote unquote third culture kid. You can look the term up. It's a official term describing the, the social so, sociological phenomenon uh, that 
is the, is the third culture kid or whatever. And uh, that's basically me. And um, But in a lot of ways, I'm, I'm sure that other needs can relate to that feeling of just not belonging, not relating to anybody. And um, this is a pretty long rambling video. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I'm probably gonna upload the whole thing as one. Um, but I hope, even though it was as long as it was, I hope that it was at least engaging enough to hold your attention. And uh, so if you guys like this content, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button below. And uh, this is Comfy Neat signing out.